before it was so nice, but now it it just looks so burnt. Words of a child, a local elementary school destroyed by fire. Investigators still trying to figure out exactly how it happened, but tonight, students and teachers are learning what's next, where they'll go. It's 11 o'clock. I'm Jeff Giannola. And I'm Kelly Day. Let's get right to it. Late this afternoon, Crestline students learned that they will be divided up among these five Vancouver schools. The farthest one is about three miles away from Crestline. Coin Local 6 reporter Cor Harlan is live at the school tonight. And Cor, when will the students go back to class? Well, Kelly and Jeff, the students will return to their assigned classes on Thursday. They will remain there for the rest of this school year. Meanwhile, here at 11 o'clock on Monday, after a big weekend fire that, as you can see, has left a good portion of Crestline Elementary School in ruins, people are trying to pick up the pieces. Heavy equipment finally began tearing away parts of the burned up Crestline Elementary Monday as the district scrambled to get 500 Crestline kids into other schools. 22 classes will need relocating, and for third grader Vita Samos, losing her school has been tough to take. Before, it was so nice, but now it, it just looks so burnt. Displaced Crestline students will be sent to other schools in the Evergreen District starting Thursday. The district says it'll make every effort to keep all the kids with their classmates and with their same teachers. Odds are some of them will be in portables, but we have almost a third of the students in Evergreen School District in portables, so that's not unusual. Neighbors report seeing and hearing kids playing with fireworks around the school the night before the fire. That is one possibility that investigators are looking at. They do know the fire started in an outside roof overhang. It's an area without sprinklers and could have accounted for how the fire spread through the school's attic. The investigation is just getting underway. Uh, lead investigator said that it could be into next week before we really have any idea of the, the cause of the origin. It's a neighborhood that has lost a lot. And while it may be just buildings for some people, for little kindergartners like Brittany Jensen, it's a loss of a lot more than just a classroom. Her winter coat was in the class and, you know, all the kids, you know, all their personal items and projects and everything is just gone. It's heartbreaking when the center of a neighborhood goes through something like this. The district's meeting with its insurance company. We're learning tonight also that it could be 2014 before the school can reopen its doors to students again. We do have exact information about student temporary school schedules. They have now been posted. They, uh, we have posted them on, on, on our website as well at coinlocal6.com. If you have any kids in this area and you're wondering which school they may be assigned to, check that out for that information. Reporting for you live tonight here from East Vancouver, Crestline Elementary, Core Harlan, Coin Local 6. Well, several fundraising efforts are already in the works for Crestline. One parent is making t shirts with the message, I love Crestline, on them. Julie Jaffe is giving all proceeds to the parent teacher organization to help teachers rebuild their classrooms. Another woman is spearheading a book drive at her church just a few blocks from the school. What we really want to do is replace classroom libraries, replace what teachers have created um, with books in their classroom. Burgerville is also stepping up on Thursday. The location's nearest Crestline will donate a percentage of their sales directly to the school. Now, when we saw that Crestline burned to the ground, we wanted to find out how safe are the schools in our area in case of a fire. Crestline did have sprinklers, but we started doing some digging and we learned that hundreds of Oregon and Washington schools don't have sprinklers and they're not required to. Out of Portland's 94 schools and buildings, 35 of them have no fire sprinklers at all. 52 have a partial system, but only seven have a full system of sprinklers that includes the attic. Now, schools are full of paper, they're full of cardboard, they're full of wood, they're full of plastic, and all of that stuff loves to burn. We asked Camby's fire marshal to highlight the common problems at many schools today. First, there are no sprinklers in this building. Since it's more than 12,000 square feet, if it were built today, it would have to have them by law. But older schools do not have to install them. Sadly, when you get outside the doors of the gymnasium, there's no fire sprinklers in the rest of the school. Even some of the classrooms with sprinklers have problems. Because it's sprinklered, this room has a couple vulnerabilities. One is there is no um, if you will, fire alarm system. There's no smoke detector on the ceiling. Windows sealed shut and doors propped open add to fire danger here. And even though a lot of parents are proud to see their children's artwork hanging in the school, we've learned that only 10% of hallway walls can be covered so the paper can't fuel the flames. 
We showed the school's principal what we found and asked why fire safety improvements are such a tough sell. A boatload of money, but we also need money for other things in education, too. So it's, it's a hard one. Now, stay with COIN Local 6 for continuing coverage of the Crestline School Fire. We will follow this investigation for you every day and check in with the students and the teachers as they settle into their new temporary schools later this week.